Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. So I, I'm gonna add a little bit to what you said though, John, about this idea, because I think where I've seen that and where I've seen it used by, by very competent people is uh, as a Masada Youth Group, a MAG-40 graduate, Moss, that's one right. of his big things. You take your whole course notes, take all that stuff, it's been vetted by everyone else, you put that in an envelope, send it registered mail to yourself, don't open it, leave it there, and then that way it can be admitted as evidence that we know you knew ahead of time and it can be read to the jury and those kinds of things. Okay, I, and, and listen, I think Masada Yub knows what the heck he's talking about, but let your attorney deal with whether or not that's gonna get done. However, I do think there's an interesting right. thing here that maybe could get us in trouble, and that is who we train with. Uh, because oh, well, absolutely. if you are training with nut jobs, who, I don't know, I mean, you know, I've seen course uh, descriptions uh, called things like the gentleman killer. And, and mm -hmm. uh, if, if you, or maybe you could, there's a little stink on what you did, and you can maybe give a prosecutor evidence that you weren't very reasonable or that your training was unreasonable. Right, and, and here's the other part of this. Make sure you get out of the training what you're supposed to get out of it. And, mm. and what do I mean by that? You know, um, don't, live in Chicago. don't live in Chicago. There you go. Um, no, it, it, what do I mean by that? I'm saying in the training, you don't want to call John as an expert witness and John says, I tell people all the time, shoot to stop the threat. But in your notes, it, you put, you know, well, John said, shoot to kill or something along those lines. Make sure your notes and everything you're talking about would match what John is saying. Because if he's called in to verify mm -hmm. what you've done, you, you understand where I'm going with that. So you make sure they match. Just don't write them down and, and say, okay, I think this is close enough. Your life, or I should say your freedoms, could depend upon it. Yeah, and, and, and I think that when you're training with a reputable trainer, somebody who's really good, then that can help you in court because, for instance, where when we go do classes, we have a pre-course assessment and a post-course assessment for our students. I have them log in that they were here. I have a waiver of liability right. for them that day. And so if, God forbid, I got called as an expert witness because one of my students has had to use deadly force, then I can say, this student on this date took this course. Here's the evidence that they were there. Here's the curriculum. Here's the syllabus from that day. Here's how they performed that day. So I can tell you based on the syllabus and the curriculum and what I do according to my res resume and my standards, what this student was informed in and what this student was trained to. And they passed that course of curriculum, therefore they did know those things. And did they act in accordance with the way that you taught? Well, that's for the jury to decide whether or not they did a good thing. But the cool part of an expert witness is, an expert witness is actually the only person allowed to give their opinion Correct. about things. To act reasonably and to do the things that the law says you need to do. In a CCW class, a good CCW class, you are taught those things. That is what you are taught. You are really taught the law, okay? And, and this is how you get in trouble with a gun, so don't do this stupid stuff. CCW class really doesn't teach you how to shoot, really doesn't teach you all to do all those things. Right. So if you have a crappy CCW class, like I did when I got my CCW, it doesn't really give you those things. But um, so uh, I love constitutional carry. My wife actually carries under constitutional carry right now because she let her CCW expire and didn't renew it. Um, and I love that. I think it should be the law of the land everywhere. Um, but you're still responsible to know the law. She does, she's well educated because I make sure she's carrying a gun, she knows what she's talking about and what she's doing, and she watches my channels because she loves me. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so for, for everyone else, I don't need a, a CCW in Arizona, right? And obviously, I mean, I've, I've got, I think 850 hours of gun school now and firearms training and those kind of things. I could probably get away without it and I know what the heck I'm doing. However, I like my CCW because number one, in Arizona it gives me reciprocity with 37 other states. It, it, it gives me the right to carry here in the great state of Kansas, right? So I can carry my concealed firearm here, and I couldn't. Uh, uh, well, I could because Kansas is constitutional carry. But, you know, in other places, we go other places like that. Uh, I does can't. That, does that actually apply? And I, I don't know this question, but I thought constitutional carry only applied to residents of that state. I'm certainly, not sure how that, how that works or not. Certainly not the case in Arizona. Now, Arizona, 
uh, we, we, if you're 21 years old, you want to conceal carry a gun, smoke them if you got them. Like, as long as you're not a prohibited possessor, doesn't matter what state resident you live from, not. resident or not, doesn't matter at all. We issue non-resident permits in those things, too. But in Arizona, my, my CCW does a couple things. It gives me reciprocity with 37 states. It um, uh, works me around the NICS system when I go to buy a firearm. When I fill right. out my 4473, my FFL, staples a copy of my CCW to it, make sure it's filled out correctly and files it, right? We don't ping the NICS system. Don't need to ping the NICS system. I'm already background check. Um, I actually like the fact if I get pulled over by law enforcement, at least having my CCW, when an officer, you know, shout and form, hey, uh, you, uh, Arizona cops, if you get pulled over, they're going to ask you if there's weapons in the car because it's Arizona, everybody's armed. Um, and they're going to say, are there any weapons in the car? Yes, sir. I do have a concealed firearm on my person. Right. Uh, you know, it's, it's an appendix position. I do have it in Arizona CCW. What does he know? You're a law-abiding citizen. I'm not a felon. That's what he knows right now. I don't got no violent past, okay? Which is the number one indicator of a violent future is a violent past. Uh, so it, it gives me those things that, and it gives me a couple places in Arizona that I can carry uh, if they serve alcohol for consumption on the premises. You got to have a, a permit in Arizona. So I like the permit. I have the permit. I renew my permit every five years like I'm supposed to. I'm actually arguing in Arizona for an enhanced permit. I can't get uh, any traction behind it because people are lazy and nobody wants to actually be able to shoot. Don't get me started. But uh, um, I, I think constitutional carry should be the law of the land, but you should. Uh, I, I certainly value my permit and I recommend people get it.